Hi folks. <laughs> Welcome all you fly fishermen that are fishing the west out there and look at, and have been to my website, flyfishingthings.com. Uh, I hope you enjoy it and I hope you're getting some benefit out of it. Today I'm going to make a video about the crane fly larva. The crane fly larva was a fly I came up with <clears throat> back in 1980 as a, um, I wanted to catch really big, big trout and at that time uh, I really hadn't uh, had any um, fly that was a big trout producer other than Platte River Specials or some woolly buggers. You catch a few, but in a big moving water like uh, the North Platte where I fished a lot or the Colorado, <clears throat> uh, any of those big, uh, big water um, rivers hold some really, really nice trout. And they're a lot of times in really deep pools and they're hard to get to. Uh, but the crane fly larva pattern is one of those flies that's well weighted. It will get down to them and I'll guarantee you um, the fish will eat it. Uh, I've seen big trout, uh, browns, lay in a stream in the North Platte. Uh, as I've drifted this fly to them, get up out of their spot, move clear across the stream to take my fly. Uh, that's why I call it a big fish mover sometimes. Um, the Great Rocky Mountain Fur Company on the North Platte <clears throat> up in Saratoga has been fishing my fly for years and has done very, very well. Uh, up there, Tom Wiersma in that shop uh, uh, has used it for years and it's one of the best flies he uses for catching big browns on the North Platte. This fly will work anywhere in um, in the west where there's crane flies but especially Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, Utah, places like that, places where there's big crane fly. And the crane fly that I'm talking about is is really uh, a very large uh, a very large fly. It is um, uh, I tied on a, a Mustad number two uh, 9672 uh, number two and it's a very big fly. It's just a big olive cigar, uh, but I use a special technique for it, and it works really, really well. I'm going to tie it for you now. I'm going to go to my bench and give you the recipe and show you how to tie it. And I guarantee you, I'll talk about it a little bit more as I'm tying it. And I guarantee you, you will catch some big fish. Also on the uh, Platte River out of Denver and their Deckers, uh, South Park. All of those places where they had the little smaller crane flies in the uh, dark olive and tan, uh, same pattern techniques work fantastic for those rivers also. So here we go. We'll go out to the bench and I'll start tying. Now this is the crane fly uh, uh, and when it's dry. You notice it's very fuzzy and it is uh, <clears throat> a light olive actually about a median olive with some little grays and pale sulfurs that kind of peek through. It has a very mottled look to it. Uh, I'm going to show you another, fl the same fly, uh, just a, a different, uh, when it's wet, you can see uh, how translucent uh, the fly is when it's wet. And it, it makes it incredibly, looks just like a real bug. Okay. Now we're going to tie our crane fly. I'm using a 9672 Mustad or equivalent, whatever, turn down eye. Uh, very big, heavy hook. And most of you have never fished, you know, number twos other than in streamers, so this is the big hook. And um, But it's what you need to get the fly down. The first thing I do is I'm going to weight the fly. So I got some medium. Uh, real, uh, not medium, but uh, light uh, lead wire. You can use a medium. Medium is actually better if you got a really heavy current. But in this case here, I'm using the light and I'm wrapping the whole shank uh, with this uh, lead wire. So that's the first step. In a real heavy current, you're going to need that weight to get down because uh, that's where the fish are going to be, laying right on the bottom in the fast water, uh, waiting for those stone flies and crane flies to come drifting by. And they know what this is when they see it, and boy, they go after it. Uh, 
Tom Wiersma up on the North Platte, who's been fishing this for a year as a guide out of the Great Rocky Mountain Fur Company. He says this is the best fly he's ever used for catching big trout, big browns on the North Platte. And he says he can feel it just tick along on the bottom when he's fishing out of his drift boat. <clears throat> okay. So I've got about uh, most of the shank covered with the lead wire. Now I'm going to start, and I'm going to secure that to the shank with, with my thread. You want to put zappa gap or some kind of glue or something on there, that's okay. <clears throat> Don't really need it, but you can. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some yellow yarn. Uh, yellow yarn is uh, is uh, the underbody of this fly is yellow, and you want that yellow to kind of peek through uh, because the bug is kind of a light olive. With splotch, it's splotchy and mottled type of look, uh, the, the actual uh, larva, and you want this yellow underbody to peek through uh, of your dubbing that we're going to put on the fly. So I, so I screw that at the, bat, at the bend, and I'm going to wrap that forward over the lead. And it creates some bulk. So now that we've got our underbody, all right, now we've got our underbody. Now we're going to go back to the back, and now we're going to create a loop dub. Let's zoom out a little bit here so that you can see a little bit of what the loop dub is. Loop dubbing technique is a technique um, that uh, creates the fuzzy, fuzzy uh, look of the fly. It's a very, very excellent uh, technique. Uh, oops. Uh, for creating fuzzy flies and a lot of fuzzy, the fuzzy flies give you the translucency uh, in the fly which is uh, makes them incredibly effective. Uh, so it's a technique you want to you want to learn if you haven't done it. You wax the loop. The loop is about six, seven inches long. You just wax it up. It'll hold the uh, dubbing in place. Now I'm going to take my cream fly larva. The crane fly larva is a mix. It's a Ligus. Ligus is the, uh, the company that produces the, the yarn. It's a nylon. It's a blended nylon out of Boulder, Colorado. I don't know if he's still there or not, but he was there for years and years. And, um, but it's a blended nylon, and it's what I use. I use the light olive, or the olive hairs here, 60%. Then I use 15% pale sulfur and 15% uh, light gray and I hand mix those to get that mottled look or you can also blend it in a blender uh, a little coffee blender and get your dubbing like that uh, either way it'll work I've never found it to be a difference uh, in terms of whether the fly the fish take the fly or not okay, so now I'm gonna build my little rope of dubbing so I take little pieces of dubbing, pull it out, and I start stacking it on that loop. And the wax will hold it in place. Just make sure it's, I got my finger in between the loop here to kind of hold it open so I can place it in the between there. You build this rope about at least five inches, but preferably about six inches for a size two. You go to a size four, 
down to six, you only need about three or four inches. <clears throat> okay. So now you see that little rope. I'm going to move that all up there. And I'm going to twist it using the loop dubbing tool until I get that done. I'm going to take my hackle pliers, grab the line, remove the dubbing tool, and start wrapping. And then I kind of make the wraps not real tight. I want a little bit of that yellow to peek through underneath uh, the uh, dubbing over wrap here. I want it to peek through uh, because that's exactly what uh, the fish are uh, key on. I mean, that's what gives the real look to the fly. Uh, the, the Okay, I'm going to zoom back in. I hope that's in focus. Now I'm going to tie off that head. Now some of you, you may want to make the head with a, with a little piece of black ostrich, one turn, two turns around the, uh, the head, and uh, tie off the head because the the bug does have a little black head on it and has little whiskers on it, but I've never seen the fish uh, care one iota about that. I've never done it that way, and the flyer works just fantastic with even without it. So I take a bore brush, pick it out even a little bit more, and as you can see, that's a very fuzzy look now. You saw what the what it looks like when it's wet, uh, and all of this fuzziness as it gets wet and used in the, in the stream the water will kind of lay back on the side and it sometimes gets taken for a uh, uh, for a little uh, sucker in the river too, an olive sucker which uh, like a small minnow and it's another reason why it's effective. But that's it. Very simple fly and uh, a great uh, producer for big trout and I mean big trout. You get um, four, five, six, eight 10, uh, the bigger they are, they know that's a big meal and they go after it. And when I fish this, I use a sinking line, medium sink line, uh, with about a 6 foot leader, uh, 2x, uh, at least a 2x. You use a 3x, you're going to break them off. A 2x or even a 1x, real heavy water if I'm fishing big fish. Cast uh, 3 quarter upstream, let it drift down as it drifts through the run or the pool. Um, about three quarters true is usually where you pick up the strike and um, then the fish is on. Uh, if you let it finish the swing, just let it hang in the water sometime and just kind of wiggle there. Uh, again, they'll come up from behind and take it like it's a small a sculpin or, uh, or a sucker. But it's a great fly. It's very effective. It works everywhere there's crane flies. So that's it. Good fishing. Thanks for visiting the website. I'm going to be tying more things in the future. Um, uh, good luck, and uh, we'll see you.